As a service to our EVS, MVS, and Interval users, CTEC has decided to make certain functionality in our software available unlicensed, meaning that it will run without licensed software. Um, the first example of this is an application that will allow customers to develop stratigraphic models from their, their lithology data. The first step is to load the application lithology to stratigraphy and we double click on the Meitio hierarchy module and choose the data file that we were interested in. Uh, this module reads only PGF files, uh, our pre-geology format, which represents lithologic data. Um, for this uh, sample video, we're going to choose Dipping Strata Lens. Now that we've read the file, we can see that our data is showing up in the viewer. We're going to move this window out of the way of the viewer. And the first step is to write the first surface. However, when we rotate the model here, we can see that we have too much z-scale. So we're going to go back to a z-scale of 1, and that looks much better. And our first surface is defined as the top of all of our pre-geology borings. Later on, we could always refine our stratigraphy data, adding additional survey data for our, to define our ground surface. But at this point, um, the, the ground surface will be defined by the top of all the borings. Um, however, it is important that we tell it what layer in the model represents the uppermost layer in our stratigraphy. And in that case, it's pretty obvious for this site that that is this silty sand region over here at the left. So we, before we write the first surface, we want to choose silty sand as our first material and then write that surface. Um, once we write that surface, the module allows us to choose which method we want and to select the first material for the first layer in our model. Now, we're going to choose the strike dip, me dip method. And the first thing we want to do is try to determine the best strike and dip. Um, after some experimenting, you'll discover that a, a strike of uh, approximately 43 degrees and a dip in the um, 20 degrees southwest range is uh, approximately correct for this model. In fact, we may adjust it as we're going through the model. Now, um, we can quickly check and see how this fits by changing the tolerance slider, which lowers the bottom surface of the range for selection of, of samples, and see how that intersects um, one of our horizons. Now, you can see here this is intersecting um, this boundary between silty sand and clay fairly well. I actually think slightly higher dip. Um, we'll try a little higher dip here. Um, and then drop that surface down. Um, it's doing a pretty good job. And it doesn't have to be perfect, as you'll see. Um, getting it close, though, does help make the whole process a little bit easier. So, our first um, task is to decide what material um, that is seen at the ground surface represents the uppermost layer in our stratigraphy. Um, and for this site, it's rather obvious that our highest layer, um, the one that would have been deposited last, um, is a silty sand layer over here on this side. So we choose silty sand and drop our tolerance back and then start looking at where the intercepts are on the surface. And the whole idea here now is to find the bottom of the silty sand layer. And we can see that it represents these borings over here, and we don't want to include any of the silty sand from this lower layer. So we could even reduce the tolerance, and notice that changing the tolerance is not affecting anything until I start getting very small values. And at that point, as we start reducing the tolerance, we actually will not drop these borings to the bottom of the silty sand. See, all these are now above the bottom until we increase the tolerance, and now they're below. Um, if we have our strike and dip, 
correct as we do here, close enough, then going to a greater tolerance has no effect on these points. So we have, we know we've defined the bottom of this first layer correctly at this point. Uh, all we do again is hit the right surface button and once again we have to decide which material represents the bottom of the second layer. And again it seems rather obvious that that would be a sand layer. So we choose sand. I was the first one so it was chosen already. And once again um, we can play with the tolerance and see um, if it has an effect, if there's something we need to do. And, and here again going to much greater tolerances has no impact on the definition from the bottom of this surface. So we have we have a good bottom of second layer and we hit the right surface button. Now we have to decide what the, the third material is. And this is where things are going to get a little trickier. As we look at our model here, um, it seems clear that As we look at our model, it's it's also clear again that our our third layer is is silt. Um, the reason that silty sand is showing up as a possibility is because it's still at the ground surface on these far borings to the right. So we choose silt, and when we do that, um, we need to set the tolerance or the minimum thickness deep enough to allow these borings here to drop to the bottom of the silty of the silt layer. And once we go deeper, there's no effect, um, which tells us that we've we've definitely got a good surface to find here. And once again we hit right surface. Now in our hierarchy, once again, silty sand is the next layer and it is the only option showing up. So it is the only possibility. Um, once again we need to uh, choose the tolerance and it looks good for us to just go to larger values. Um, it allows all of these borings to go to the bottom of the silty sand. Notice this one boring here um, is, is quite a bit shorter than the rest but that's okay. That's, that's the data. and. Uh, so that is what we want. Rotate the model back to the view we've been looking at previously. And we write the surface. Okay, now um, the next surface is going to be bottom of clay. Since clay was the only material that was below silty sand, there's no other choices. However, in this particular situation, um, the layer below clay, which is sand again, um, exists only as a lens in, in some of the borings. So here is where changing the tolerance will have a profound effect on how this model is formed and where we decide that that clay lens would have, uh, where its horizons would have projected. So um, you notice here as we change um, the tolerance, we are moving the place where we're going to say the clay horizon would have intercepted in the middle of these uh, borings. Um, and we, we need to be deep enough though to um, completely define the uh, sand layer here. So we need to be this deep. Notice that here we're not finding that sand layer. And it looks like uh, a little refinement to our dip and strike um, might be advantageous. So I'm going to play with this value a little bit more and I think that in order to um, form the layer here that's passing through these borings and these, we need a deeper, uh, excuse me, uh, a greater dip. And so we want to set our surface to pass through um, the sand lens here on these borings and then also see 
that the surface that we choose is close to passing through um, the sand lens on this point. Um, and as such, um, we then would have an appropriate uh, dip for defining this next layer. So I like this value right now. Um, and I still need to increase the tolerance to find the bottom of that clay. And again, we're, we're not trying to find the bottom of the sand right now. We're just trying to find out where the clay would pinch out. So uh, we want to um, go to where all of our borings get to the bottom of the clay, but not much deeper than that. And about right there. Right this surface, and if I do it correctly, um, we're now in a position to define the bottom of the clay lens. Excuse me. We're now in a position to define the bottom of the sand layer, um, the blue region here that, that is a lens. And notice that, again, the greater tolerances or greater thicknesses have have no impact on the definition of the surface. So I think we have a good value here. We write that surface out. And now finally, now we're looking for the bottom of clay again. Defined by these sets of borings at this end. This looks good. And I write that surface. And then finally we're at the bottom of our model. And one of the things that will happen here is that our model is going to be defined by all of the surface, all of the points defined in the surface. And if we allow these additional borings to be part of the definition for the bottom of gravel, um, then the surface will conform to those borings. Um, it's pretty obvious here that these four borings um, were into the gravel but did not find the bottom of gravel and in fact we don't know unless we have more information about the site whether these over here do but I we don't really want to include these and so the easiest way to uh, to do that is to select those borings and then drop them and I'm just going to do that one at a time. I hold down the Alt key, click on a boring, it pops up the boring window, and I click on boring dropped, and drop, and drop. And now um, I'm going to define my last surface using only these points as the bottom. I write that last surface, and And when I write that last surface, uh, Make Geo Hierarchy automatically writes out both our GMF and GeoFile. Here I am in a Windows browser looking at the folder. This was the file that we read. And these two files um, are the two files that were created at exactly the same time. The finished GMF and then the Geo that goes with it. Now, since the geo files allow us to krieg or to build our model in thickness space, a model such as this um, with stratigraphic layers that are dipped um, will be better honored with a geo file. So as we open up this file we can see now that our file represents our 24 borings defining nine surfaces that define eight geologic units, the ground surface and the bottom of eight layers and our first layer is silty sand. Now the names here in the file represent the names for the surfaces. So the first two surfaces should have the same name, silty sand. And then we have sand, silt, silty sand, clay, sand, clay, and gravel layers.